Good morning and welcome to day three of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 9. And oh dear, oh dear indeed, this is a bad, painful start to the day. <laughs> My first mistake, I drank with a Scotswoman. My second mistake, I drank with a Yorkshire man. The result, I'm very hungover this morning and just a little bit pained. <laughs> Help! Please! I'm going to be needing lots and lots of these today, by the way. <laughs> oh! Yes, good morning, how are you doing? Um, I can't remember if I said I was going to come back or not. Um, and excuse the breeze. Um, but I uh, ended up having a brilliant night last night. And uh, we all got a wee bit carried away with ourselves. Uh, as I'm sure you know, we were having a wee celebration last night. We had some cake. Had some wine, had some beer. Um, I bought a keg of that ghost ship stuff, you know, so that was opened up. So Paul and I were sampling that. Uh, Susan and I were sampling the wines. Then the rum came out. And yeah, it kind of all went a wee bit downhill after the music went on. Even the kids got in on the jigging. <laughs> oh dear, you know. Really, really good night, but oh dear. No, way too much drink. But yes, by the time it was uh, time for bed, we all just sort of uh, hit a wall after, because it was a long day yesterday, you know, we were up early, uh, it was a, a good four hour cruise, which was good, uh, and then that walk, and yeah, we were, we kind of hit a wall, and we were knackered. But uh, apologies, before I say anything else, let me just get an apology out of the way. And I want to apologise to Howard and Lisa Farley. Is it Farley? I'm sure it's Farley. They're on the Brooms Captain, just over there, behind the trees. Now, um, they gave us a wee wave. Um, I, I, I watched them come into the marina, actually, when I was trying to move it up. And they shouted at me. I didn't quite catch their names, but um, I did get a wee message from them later on. Um, saying come over um, and any other time Howard and Lisa I would have I absolutely would have I would have been over there like a shot to meet you um, but it was just one of those sort of uh, unfortunate bad timing situations where we were obviously celebrating and having a, a wee bit of a, a, a small soiree <laughs> on the boat last night. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it just felt a bit wrong just to sort of leave, you know. Um, so yeah, it was a, a wee bit bad timing. But so I apologise, Howard and Lisa, I didn't come over and say hi to you. Um, <sighs> next time, definitely next time. Um, I, I feel a bit sort of guilty, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so that's the apology. Okay, I've, I've apologised. Um, but definitely, next time we're around, we'll definitely meet up and we'll, we'll share a wee um, pint or something like that. But last night it was just a kind of full-on party mode on the boat. It was a party boat last night, definitely. Not loud, you know, just in case you're wondering, because obviously there's a... Not just boats here, but uh, campers as well, you know. Um, and but they were out; they were having a barbecue and everything like that. So uh, yeah, we we weren't loud, you know. And the music wasn't booming. We were very respectful, and we kept turning it down the later it got, you know. Um, and by the time we put it actually off, about I think up to about half nine, half nine or something like that, you know. Um, we weren't disturbing anybody, you know. So we were respectful. We were having a party, but we were respectfully having a party. So yeah. Anyway, 
Um, so, what's on the agenda for today? Well, today we want to go to Reedham. Um, we want to go to Reedham because um, there's a, a wee sort of pet, petties, I think, petties, 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 um, animal park, I think there is down at Reedham. Um, so I've heard, you know. So, we're going to go to that. Uh, and we're going to go to, uh, down to Reedham. Um, it shouldn't take us too long to get there, actually. Um, let me just put this... And down on the deck there, and he changed my arm. <laughs> um, yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take us too long to get down to it. Oh, sorry. Spiked it on the sky there. Um, it shouldn't take us too long to get to Reedham. I, I'm estimating maybe a couple of hours, uh, which is not very long at all. The time is currently half past six, so it's very, very early. Everybody's still sleeping, so I'm trying to keep a wee bit quiet. Um, you can see the, the the weather, the clouds have rolled over, the breeze has picked up, it's still not cold, um, it's supposed to be a cracking day, so we're kind of uh, hoping it will be, uh, continue to be a good day. I would like to leave, probably about now actually, because just now the tide is going out, we're having to go that way. Um, towards Great uh, Yarmouth in order to get to Reedham. But we don't go up towards the Blade and Water, we, we're going to go along the, the, the new car. Um, but if the tide's going out just now, then if we were to leave just now, we would get a nice push all the way up to Great Yarmouth. Saves on fuel, you know, that's basically the only reason for doing that. It just saves on fuel because if we leave it till later, be punching against the tide and we'll have to put some more revs on yeah so um so oh and somebody's already making a an early start oh that's a that's a nice boat that by the way that's a very nice boat private boat obviously you know keep looking at that that's a it's a boat called thunder you know very very nice boat Lovely, lovely. So they obviously got the same idea. Um, I actually spoke, I was actually speaking to them yesterday as well. Um, and uh, I think they're on way back north. North today, so. Excellent. Oh, that's fantastic. So he's got the right idea. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, unlike um, this one here. It just sort of wings it, <laughs> but yes. Oh, uh, so yeah. That's um, that's what we're we're gonna do. We want to go to um, Great Yarmouth today. We um, no, we don't want to go to Great Yarmouth today. We want to go to Reedham today, but because the tide is currently heading out, um, it would be good to actually um, uh, maybe leave just very very shortly and just get a nice wee push up up the river um one other soul paul he has stirred um he seems to be fine you know good strong strapping manly yorkshireman that he is <laughs> um i think um susan is a bit like myself this morning a bit broken i think she's not stirred yet you know but um I think coffees are getting made rapidly, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a very good night though, it really was. Anyway, that's all that um, I'm going to talk about just now, I'm not going to babble too much. I'm really needing coffee, maybe some paracetamol as well. Um, and uh, let's kind of get the day started. So, um, yeah, uh, I will keep you updated on the events of the day. Uh, it's going to be a short cruise day, but hopefully um, there'll be plenty to do uh, round about um, later on. Yeah, so as always though, I'll keep you updated, so until then, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers!
just a little wee update for you. I am on my way. Um, I have just left the Waveney River Centre. Uh, Howard and Lisa were sitting on the back of their lovely Brooms Captain. <coughs> Gave them a wee wave. Um, and definitely next time we will definitely catch up. It was just a uh, fortunate bad timing. So once again I apologise. But uh, you know, it sometimes happens. You know. <laughs> But uh, yes, we are on our way. We've just left the Waveney River Centre. We uh, uh, turned left outside the Waveney River Centre up to the Wee Junction where you can turn right to go down to the Old Broad or left towards St Olaf's. We've turned left and are continuing um, across the river. We are getting our absolutely wonderful small little push uh, with the tide. Just give me just a wee second while I'm just, yeah, we're getting a, a wonderful um, push with the tide, um, hardly doing any waves at all, and yet we're just like cruising along very nicely. So it's definitely sometimes worth uh, taking, especially in the southern broads, taking um, the tide times into account if you just want to save on a little fuel. You know? um, and it makes things easier. There is quite a strong breeze actually blowing. Um, I was actually a wee bit surprised when I, I left the shelter of the river centre just how strong it is. Um, but uh, it is for all intents and purposes going to get brighter and warmer despite the fact that it's only 10 past 7 uh, in the morning. It's still not cold. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not cold but it is slightly chilly so I'll put the, the wee sort of a, uh, <laughs> just to cover the arms until it warms up a bit. Um, everybody is up now, um, once the Admiral is up everybody gets up, that's the law of the boat. <laughs> not, not really honestly. Um, but uh, much tea is, much tea is being drunk this morning. Um, although surprisingly um, she's not quite as broken. As, um, she's, she's definitely not as broken as I am. <laughs> but uh, a couple of cups of tea already and I'm feeling a bit more alive myself. So all is good. Um, but yes, um, everything is going good. Um, it shouldn't take us too long to get to Weedham. It's just going to be a short cruise today. But um, we will... Uh, We'll get there soon and we'll maybe even top up the water today. And uh, we've not really showered on, on on the boat yet, but we maybe we have been using quite a well water for obviously sinks and toilets and all that. So we'll we'll do a water top up. I tried to top it up every day, but because we've not been showering and just using it for sinks and toilets, I've not really worried too much about it. But we will definitely top it up today at Riga. So yeah. That's the update so far. I will keep you updated on this short little cruise. So uh, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers.
the update for you. Um, I just wanted to. Um, uh, well, basically, I'm so <laughs> I'm still cruising up the river, away from it. Um, uh, and it's not very long since uh, I sort of said hello. Just a wee update for you. Um, but I just wanted to turn it back actually, and. Um, kind of explain a wee bit why um, we're leaving so early to get to Reedham when really there's not much need um, we're obviously going to go to that, that PT's Petty's um, Animal Park you know for the kids later on but um, we could really do that anytime you know and we don't really need to be at Redham until maybe sort of lunch time-ish so why are we leaving so early just now in the morning? Well, it's not just the tide reason there is another reason as well is that um, obviously we're getting a, a, a help down the river with the tide this is saving on fuel um, and this is a good thing you know but one of the reasons um, I, I personally think it's, it's a good idea to, to leave at this early is that Weedham is, is a kind of a stopover for anybody that wants to go north, back into the northern broads. Um, low water is happening now, slack water is going to be in about an hour. Um, so. If anybody's at Reedham wanting to go north, they should be, well, they should have left Reedham by now, in theory. Um, which means that uh, there are spaces at Reedham. So, maybe leaving now and getting to Reedham, we get into the space that's been left by the people heading north before the people up north come south and decide they want to stop at Weedham. I mean, I don't think they'd stop at Weedham, you know, this early in the morning, I think they'd keep on going. But, you know, it makes sense, you know, that if a lot of people stay the night at Weedham because they want to go north, they head north to catch the tide this morning, that means that the space is at Weedham, and if we approach there, we can get into the space. That way we, we've got no worries and no sort of will we or won't we get in. Um, into um, Redham. Um, I'm still quite surprised at how quiet it is, if I'm honest, you know. Um, it's... I mean, I know the Southern Broads are quieter anyway. Um, that's just that's just a given. Um, and the Waveney River Centre, that eventually filled up, you know, and, you know, it was, you know, we had some boats coming in later on, you know, and it was just like, well, we're going to struggle to get in, I'll be the but, um, but yeah, but still, I mean, I expected chaos, you know, everybody was saying, oh, you know, you're, you're, it's a disaster zone, you know, you must be out of your mind coming in the school holidays, but I mean, maybe we got lucky on Saturday, you know, maybe we got the boat early enough and we got down to Acle quick enough um, that we just missed something up there you know i mean i know acle was busy by the time we got there but that was once again that's just a given it's acle um but we left acle we've come down here you know there's very few boats i mean i know it's the southern broads and maybe we're, we're being spoiled here maybe we'll go back to the northern broads and we will enter the chaos you know but so far it's just like really quiet you know and I, I'm almost thinking to myself, even if we went to read up at lunchtime, we would still get space, you know? I don't know, I don't know. It's, 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 it's all very confusing for me, you know? I've never been at this time of the year, you know? So I'm, I'm going on sort of um, theories, you know? School holidays, you know? Heights of the season, good weather, you know? The, the boats are obviously a lot more expensive, so because a lot more people hire over the summer holidays, so it should be busy. But so far, it's not, and it's just like really weird. But uh, yeah. Anyway, 
I'm, I'm babbling again. Uh, that was, that basically that's that's my that's my thinking and my theory as to why it's a good idea to try to get to read them so early in the morning. Um, which is basically anybody staying there that wants to head north or left, we can uh, arrive and get into a space that way we're not hanging around. And we can get into a space, moor up, get water, go to the park. If we decide to go elsewhere later, we've got time. Or we can s spend the night and we don't, you know? So yeah, it's uh, it, it makes sense to me, at least in my logic, you know? We shall see if <laughs> that actually, if that happens, so yeah. Anyway, that's the update so far. Just had a, I uh, just wanted a wee chat just to um, um, share my logic with you. Um, and let's see if that logic happens. So, uh, as always though, I'll keep you updated on the rest of the journey. So until then, I'll speak to you later. Bye for now. Cheers. Just a little wee update for you. Um, I've just uh, gone under 
Summer Leighton Railway Bridge there. Um, not a particularly low bridge today. Um, uh, there was huge amounts of clearance under that. Um, probably in excess of about 11 foot or so. Um, so yes, uh, the tide uh, are definitely going out. The rivers are definitely very low. Um, past uh, Destiny moored up at Summer Leighton as well. Um, the boat of Mark and Shirley Lawrence, um, the, uh, the, the, the group um, creators of the Norfolk Broads Boats, Pictures and News Facebook group. Uh, you might have remembered them from last year from uh, where, uh, <laughs> well, uh, I bumped into them in um, uh, Brundle uh, at the Air Pub and then um, the next day at um, Rockland St. Lady, yes, so uh, uh, unfortunately they were still uh, all the curtains were closed, so I'm assuming they're still um, in bed sleeping. Um, but yes, Mark and Shirley, I passed you. <laughs> they gave you a wee wave as well as I, as I did. Uh, but yes, um, uh, continuing on up the river, um, the, it's slowly getting a wee bit warmer, although that breeze that's uh, still hanging around is uh, keeping it rather cool. It's still nice having the, the roof back though. Um, and yes, uh, so far there's only one other private boat. Uh, he came out of the marina at Summer Leighton. Uh, so, it's, so far it's just us that's on the river. Um, obviously thunder uh, that you saw leaving uh, when I was saying good morning to you. Um, he's probably long gone uh, back up north. I believe that's where he was heading this morning. Um, so yes, um, everything is going really, really well and um, it's uh, turning into uh, quite a lovely cruise this morning actually. Um, so that's the update, basically. <laughs> uh, just basically wanted to pop by and say uh, good morning to Mark and Shirley uh, and uh, give, give you a wee wave and say that uh, I passed, passed you. Um, so yeah, um, we are going to see what happens, um, we're not going to approach any more low bridges, I think the next thing uh, we're going to have to worry about is the Haddard School New Cup, um, and I'm not entirely sure what the tide is actually going to do, um, just uh, knock off a few revs here, I'm going a bit too fast with the tide. Um, yes, um, the the new cut's going to be a wee bit odd, um, I, I do believe, um, as regards to the tide, um, we're getting a nice wee push all the way up here, um, and you would think that um, when the tide gets to um, St. Olaf's, it continues going, flowing out, up the uh, River Waverley and out across Baden. But at, at the new car, it's, it's, it's a bit odd. You would think it would maybe go straight along the new car and then up the, uh, the year. But I think what actually happens when you get to the new car is that the river flows out, down from the year, and comes down the new car and then sort of swirls around and then goes up the wavening. So, yeah, I might get to St. Olaf's and suddenly discover that I'm going to have to punch against the tide to go along the new cut and into Redham. But that's actually not too bad because it's, um, it's quite a short, you know, basically once I get to the new cut, it's only about a mile, mile and a half to Redham, uh, maybe a little more. So, yeah. It, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on that just to see exactly what happens with the tide along the view cuts um, when the tide is going out. Uh, I believe it is still going out. I'm just having a wee look. Yes, there is still some slight outward movement on the river. It's slowing down. The tide is hardly now. It's not quite slack water on Braden at the moment. So there is still some some movement. So yeah, um, everything is going very well though. Um, we are all, uh, well, we're just sort of getting ourselves away from organizing, but basically it's, 
it's all quite quiet on the water at the moment, even the kids are quiet at the moment. You know, they got up, they had their breakfast and they're away just sort of um, uh, playing their electronic devices at the moment in the cabins and just um, being rather quiet and sedate. So it's all very peaceful and tranquil this morning indeed, you know. Um, as for the adults, well, I think, I don't know about Susan and Paul, I'm still getting over that sort of woozy head, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, I'm not particularly hungover uh, at the moment. I've had a, a, a few cups of tea, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. But I've definitely got that sort of that wooziness. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had a drink last night. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Enough babbling, um, that is uh, the update so far, so I will keep you updated throughout the, the course of the, the day, so uh, yes, until later, I'll speak to you soon, bye for now, cheers!
we update for you. Um, yes, uh, I am now on the Hatterscore new cut, and as expected, what I was talking about earlier is that the, the colour definitely does change. Um, we were cruising along very nicely, um, only about a thousand revs and still doing just over five miles an hour. That shows you just how powerful that current was, just uh, helping us down and basically we were just sipping, just, just sipping fuel all the way up from the Waveney River Centre. Sometimes it pays I to go with a wine. No, we, we, we sip wine later. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. not later. Nobody told me that. Yes, I know. I know. Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't going to say publicly, but um, she's on the wine already. God help us. <laughs> You're talking her into it. <laughs> but yes, um, as I was saying, we, we've just been sipping um, diesel fuel all the way up from the Waveney River Centre until we got to St Olav's. And as expected, what has happened is that the current seems to be coming down the year along the Haddiscourt New Cut, gets a bit swirly at St Olaf's and then sort of disappears back up the Waverley. So we've had to we've had to add a few more revs on um, in order to get uh, across the, the new cut. So we're no longer sipping fuel. But we're not gulping it and that's the main thing. So we're yeah. So that has answered the question about what actually happened when you cross the new cut uh, as of well, um, regards to the tides. Um, we are continuing down the new cut, which means that if uh, we're not going to be very far away from Reedham now, uh, we're basically at the end of the new cut. We join the river here and that go under another bridge, and that's us at Reedham. If logic is on my side. Which it normally isn't. Which it normally isn't, ad admittedly. Yes, yes, yes. It's, my logic is very, very question not, not questionable. Logic. It's very questionable at times. <laughs> but um, yes, if logic is is on my side, which I'm, isn't. I, I'm kind of hoping it is this time, you know. Hey, I'm an experienced boater. At least I like to think I am. I have experience. I know these things. <laughs> Uh, we just know this is going to backfire on me badly. But we will get to see and see if my thought processes... No! No, no, Please, no, my, my I don't thought. want to see your thought processes. <laughs> don't make me see your thought processes. You're going to see mean, them. You're you, going to see them. You Behave yourself. You don't hate me that much. Sure. Behave yourself. <laughs> I don't want to see your thought processes. Uh. <laughs> Where can I jump off the ship? Right. Russell's going to show me his thought processes. I don't want to see them. I don't want to <laughs> see what I have to put up with, by the way. You know? I don't want to I was watch. worried that they would I'm going to go and jump off the back. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be worried about them having to deal with me. I think it's me having to deal with them for a week. <laughs> Ah, yes, anyway, we will see if my logic and thought processes regarding Redum um, um, come to fruition um, or if it just sort of totally backfires on me and it really is way too early in the morning and yes, there's, um, we're going to have to change plans or something like that. We, we will see, you know, but um, yeah, anyway. I'm going to go just now. I'm going to keep it uh, quite brief. Um, we are, like I say, we're approaching the end of the new cut, so we're almost at Redum. It's not taking us very long. It's going to only, literally, only have been about, give or take, two hours, maybe, maybe two and a half hours to get to here. So, yeah, not very long at all. So, short cruise. Um, just uh, out of curiosity, we've. Uh, we might need to run the engine for a wee while at some point today just to keep the batteries chopped up. Um, a couple of hours cruise uh, is maybe not sufficient to fully charge up the batteries, so but we'll, we will worry about that later on. You know? So yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to go for now. I'll keep you updated on the rest of the day, um, and uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. So until later, bye for now. Bye bye. Cheers! Bye.
Okay, just a little wee update for you. Um, we are at Reedham. Oh yeah, we are came under the bridge, no problem. That was a fast flowing tide by the way. After we came out the new cut, we got the full force of the outgoing tide from the river Yeah, and boy, it was powerful. You really had to throttle up in order to just, just maintain five miles an hour to get under the bridge and into the um, Reedham Yacht Station. There were spaces, as expected, um, although it was still a wee bit busy. I was a wee bit worried there when I first came under the bridge, but uh, there were spaces um, outside the Lord Nelson. We moored up outside just by the, um, the um, uh, ranger's uh, shed, um, and we were just starting to tie off when the boat in front, um, basically, they left, and it was just like, We've got a good idea here. Uh, what we did is we undid our ropes. We moved literally one boat's length forward <laughs> um, and tied off the ropes again. So now we've basically got the, uh, the ranger shed there. We have a water point there as well for topping up the water later. But just over there, there's an electricity point. And we kind of figured since it's, uh, it was about nine o'clock in the morning, um, and we're going to be here all day, rather than worry about the batteries, rather than worry about firing up the engine later, if we move here, we can hook up to shore power, and then that's us for the rest of the day. We don't need to worry about um, power or electricity or charging things or running engines or anything like that. The only problem with that idea, which was very good and you as you can see Paul's are on full on investigation mode at the moment um, is that we've hooked up to a shore power but we don't seem to be on shore power um, now this happened to me once before on you first my when I'm doing this will be trouble what can I say Paul it's a very um, admiral yeah. there'll still be trouble <laughs> uh, but yes um, basically uh, when this once th this happened to me once before in Fair Sovereign, and base uh, I just I tracked it down to a fuse box that uh, had essentially tripped. One one fuse had tripped, and all I did was flick a switch and bang onto shore power. The only problem is is that we can't find the fuse. I mean, you've got these circuit breakers here, but there should be a bank of proper fuses, much like a household fuse box. We can't seem to find it anywhere. We have phoned the uh, Norfolk Bros Direct. I've spoke to the engineer. Um, the minute he asked what was lit up on the inverter panel down here, the minute I said AC input was not lit, he went, yep, okay, right, okay, yep. Did, did you say you'd spoken to the engineer? I spoke to yeah, the engineer. This is the engineer. No, no, that's the engine. No, this yeah. is the engine. Oh, the engine is here. Oh, yeah. Engine, this is the engine here. <laughs> um, engine, it's here. You haven't spoken to it yet. Do you want to speak to it? See if it makes Hello, it engine. Up? How are you doing? Now I've you've spoken, spoken to, to the, the engine here. here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. No, no, no wonder I'm becoming an alcoholic on this trip with all the. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, in short, the minute I said that the AC input was not lit, um, he said, yes, there is an issue there. You are not on shore power, um, and he's going to come down. He's, he, he's up at Roxham at the moment. He said it might, might take him about an hour or so to get, which is perfectly fine for us. We're in no great rush at the moment. Uh, we're just going to get, basically, get a cup of tea and just sort of chill and relax a wee bit. It's getting really warm now now that the clouds are rolling away and the sun's coming out um, but he's going to come down he will he will know exactly where this fuse box is he'll probably flip the switch and we will end up on shore power when he does come if that is what he does we're going to pay very close attention to exactly where he's going and what he's doing so that if it happens again we will know um, how to deal with that ourselves on this particular boat I think that's all it is. I can't find the fuse box. Paul's dismantling the uh, boat as we speak, looking for the fuse box. Um, so yeah, um, but.
but we'll let the engineer come down, have a look. You know, we'll make him a nice cup of tea, and uh, you'll get us back on shore, pal. I'll make him a nice cup of tea. <laughs> Um, yeah, you offered the cup of tea, we're not doing your dirty work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, um, so that is basically the update. Uh, we're, we're waiting for the engineer to come down. Um, uh, it's their fault. Uh, the button. Oh, wait a minute, I need to put the inverter on for you. Off. Up there we go. Isn't this. This is the TV by the way, isn't that cool? You know, isn't that cool? That's a great wee thing, just, just the way to, to hide the TV, you know? Anyway, yes, I get, I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, we are, uh, we'll just wait for the uh, engineer to come down. So in the meantime, the clouds are rolling away, the sun is coming out, it is beating down very, very hard and powerful. There is a bit of a breeze still blowing though, it's very cooling but it is quite stiff which is why I'm actually inside the boat and not walking outside on the um, key heading because uh, you just get a massive wind noise on the microphone and be able to yeah. So yeah, it's not, um, so the boat's not suffered a major catastrophe, there's no major issues or anything like that, we're just basically essentially just getting things checked out um, to get us on um, shore power because we don't really want to be worrying about running engines or, or when we're charging up in the electricity and all that sort of thing. Are you sure? So I'm quite sure. Okay. So yeah, um, that's the update so far. I will keep you updated throughout the rest of the day. It's been a short cruise day, but we've still got plenty of time ahead of us for the rest of the day. So it's going to be fun and games. And we've got the ghost ship. Which is pretty good for, very like, good for a boat with no power, it might end up like a ghost ship, yeah. so we've got ghost ship. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing good, and boy did we decimate that last night. <laughs> very good. Anyway, gonna go for now, I'll keep you updated on the events of the day, so uh, until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers! Okay, just a little wee update for you. Um, <laughs> that has the engineer been. He's been down, um, he's had a cup of tea, uh, we've had a nice wee chat with him, and he literally did exactly what I thought he would do. Um, and just for your information, um, if you ever hire Fair Majesty 2, um, and you um, connect to shore power, and it sometimes trips, and you're, it won't run on shore power, and you just basically, what it is, is a fuse trips, you'll find it under this seat here in the middle next to um, the engineer next to the engine here you know <laughs> and basically you'll see it much like a, a house fuse it'll be tripped flip it and bang that's you on shore power it's it literally was exactly what i thought it was happens sometimes when you connect to shore power we couldn't find the switch we never thought to look under the um saloon seating but uh, that is where it is located so we are now on shore power um, and we do not need to worry about power, electricity, phones are being plugged in, <laughs> batteries are being charged. So yeah, it's good. Everything's good. Um, the clouds have rolled away. The sun is beating and oh, it has got hot. Um, however, thankfully for the moment, there is still a stiff breeze blowing. That's why I'm currently in the boat and not outside. Um, so outside the boat, it's nice and cool and it's refreshing and it's not too hot at all. Sitting here uh, in the shelter of the, the boat, it's hot <laughs> under that sun. That sun is really blazing, but yeah. Um, everything's going good. We're uh, having a good time. We are not entirely sure when we're going to get organized to uh, head on out. Um, I think we need some bread. Uh, we might need to do a wee bit of shopping, so um, yeah, uh, we'll maybe go do a wee bit of shopping, come back to the boat, possibly get ourselves organised and then head on out, uh, wherever this animal park is, you know, which will be interesting. So yeah, that's the update so far. Um, as always though, I'll keep you updated um, on the events of the day, so uh, until later, I shall, uh, I'll speak to you soon, so bye for now. Bye for Cheers. now. Cheers. Bye. Okay, just a little wee update for you. We're lost. <laughs> well, I don't think we're quite lost. I think I'm pretty sure we're on the right track. Um, 
we have left the boat uh, at Reedham behind. We basically went along, followed the road uh, towards the ship, up the hill, came to a wee school, turned right, um, followed the road back down, across the uh, the bridge, uh, the railway track on a wee bridge. Kept following the road down, it kind of forked a wee bit. You take the left hand fork, up a, what doesn't look like a very well used road, and um, fly and uh, keep on following it up. Uh, if we have got the directions correctly, we are on the right road, but uh, we're walking and walking and walking and we're still not seeing anything. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's the correct way to go. Um, it's a, uh, all this walking though is, is, is a wee bit disconcerting development and slightly disturbing uh, development of uh, the new boating holidays. <laughs> I should be in a pub drinking beer, you know, <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, the sun is high, the sky are blue, the wind is a bit sheltered in amongst all these trees so it's getting very warm and it's definitely sun cream weather I've put some on but whether it's enough I don't know uh, but we're continuing up this road anyway and if anything even if we don't quite make it to whatever we're trying to get to it's been a good wee walk regardless but uh, you enjoyed the walk? yeah yeah, yeah he's enjoyed the walk <laughs> uh, but yes, we should be getting there shortly. According to the generic Apple maps, uh, it should only be within the next five minutes, although admittedly I don't know if that was by car or by walk, so it might be a wee bit longer walking. But uh, it's got to be nearby. It's got to be nearby. The, the, the ranger station, uh, the guy at the ranger station said it was only about a 25 minute walk to it from uh, Freedom, so it feels double that <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, it's, it's been a good day so far. We've had quite a relaxing morning once we got to Freedom. Um, well, I don't think I updated you. I know I did update you on the, the um, shore power situation. Um, so yeah, we, we've got shore power and everything's fine with that. And we're just, uh, like I say, we're just continuing. Uh, we just relaxed, had a cup of tea, a little bit of lunch, um, and then we kind of got all got ready and uh, off on this little uh, adventure looking for this um, animal park, which uh, I have been told the kids will love. So it's just a matter of finding it. Uh, so yeah. That's the adventure so far, that's the update. Uh, it is going really good. I'm grateful for the breeze uh, when I can get it. Um, and uh, yeah, all's well. I'll keep you updated though, uh, so until later, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers! Okay, just a little wee update while uh, all four kids, that would be uh, three children and one adult, four kids, Enjoy a little pirate ship action. <laughs> um, just a quick wee update for you. We are at the Petty's Animal Park. Now, at the moment, we haven't seen much in the way of animals. We've seen uh, monkeys, uh, peacocks, uh, cockatiels so far. But the, the kids seem to have found this amusement area down here. And I won't lie, okay, it's quite expensive to get in here. Um, I won't talk about the place exactly, but it is a wee bit expensive for a family, you know, to get in here. But obviously all these rides here are free, and I must admit, for the kids, this place is huge, you know? I mean, I just, I was just expecting just a, a, a sort of, uh, almost like a, a backyard farm place, you know? A bit of a novelty place, you know, with just some sheep and some goats and maybe some hens and chickens and that was about it 
No, this place is large. This place is really large. They've even got, I don't know if it's coming, I don't think it's coming just now, but they've even got, um, just here, um, I don't know if you can see, uh, just behind the, the fence here, um, there's a wee sort of a narrow gauge railway, and they've got a wee uh, train that sort of uh, runs around the, the edge of the park, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a great place for kids so far. We've not been here that long. Um, we were correct in our, our direction, even though it seemed that we were going the wrong way. We checked various maps and we were constantly, yep, we're on the right way, we're on the right way. And we found it eventually. Um, and like I say, it, it is large. But the only drawback is, is that on a day like this, it's hot. <laughs> we're, we're sheltered by the breeze from all the trees surrounding the area and the sun is really beaming down. Um, but yeah, I would, I would, I'm still trying to get my head around the place um, and we're, like I say we've not really been here very long, we're just, we were just having a wee look at, uh, um, to um, see what is available here. Um, but the minute the kids saw all the rides and found out you didn't need to pay for the rides, you know, they're into everything. Um, it also turns out that although um, uh, uh, the Ackroyd family, who is from the sort of Midlands, I'll say, um, they broke up school on Friday, so this is the first week of their school holidays. But it turns out that down here in Norfolk, their school holidays don't start until next week. This could explain why um, it's actually not quite as busy as we expected it to be this week. And certainly here at the Animal Park, um, although it's a Monday, it really is rather quiet indeed. Um, oh, and we've even, I've just seen, a, we've got some pigs here, you know. So, yes, it's, uh, the kids are having a ball, you know. The big kid. Are you, are you coming on the roller coaster? Are you coming on the roller coaster? Are you coming on? Come okay, on. we'll Come go on, on the roller coaster. coaster. We'll go on the roller coaster. We're going on the roller. I'm going on the roller coaster. Yeah, we're going. We're going the rocky roll. The rock. The rocky roller coaster. So, anyway, I'm away to have a wee bit of a fun since I'm a bit of a kid as well. So I'll speak to you later. Until then, bye for now. Cheers. Howdy, folks. Please keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the train and remain seated at all times. kids ride okay and literally you go around three maybe four times and it's about 
it, the, in total it's about one and a half minutes but it was actually quite good for the last time I enjoyed that you know I'm not really one for roller coasters. I tried to get a picture of the, the narrow gauge train as it was coming through here as well but uh, yes uh, I don't know if that's uh, that's come up but yeah the, the rocky roller coaster um, kid ride Fun. Go, go on it. it it's, it's, it's short, but it's a good laugh. It is a good laugh. You know, that's brilliant. So yeah. Um, anyway, Verovsky, looking for more rides and more fun. So uh, oh, I think they found uh, yes, uh, bumper cars or something like that. But yes, uh, I'll keep you updated. You know, I'm just, I'm actually starting to enjoy myself a wee bit <laughs> myself. Actually. Oh yeah, fun and games. So anyway. I'll keep you updated and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers! Okay, considering about the, uh, the, the Minecraft roller coaster, I have been persuaded to go on the more modern. Persuaded. Caterpillar roller coaster. Ever since we got here, it's been can we go on the ride? Can we go on the ride? He's been going. It's his, he's the one that wants to go on. He's the big kid. I, We're I'm, all being I'm forced. Not, I'm at not forcing anybody. Protesting. You know? I'm so not going to be any forcing. But, yes, this is apparently like the most big one. kids. He needs to be strapped in by the professionals because he doesn't know what to do. I will probably jump out halfway through this. <laughs> uh, but yes, this is the, this is the caterpillar ride. Right? Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll see how this one goes. You know, but uh, yeah, I'm just talking about it. Well, let's watch it. Okay. It's a kid's thing, I know, but <laughs> it's got a bit. It's actually, I'm, uh, I'm having a bit of um, sneaky, enjoyable fun here. You know, <laughs> and we're gonna see. Oh! 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 And that was a caterpillar ride. <laughs> well, I like them both for different reasons. I've got to admit, you know, they're just kids rides, but they're actually quite good fun, you know. Um, they they give you a, a, a small rush without the terror induced by some of the adult rides that you might find. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to go to the. Come back and tell them then. We just make more in the shade here while we go and run back and tell them. I don't know if we're going to go on the safari adventure. Are we going to go on the safari adventure? It looks like we might be going on the safari adventure. I don't know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, and what about you, Sophie? How are you enjoying your visit to Peppy? It's fun. It's fun. Is it too hot? It's too hot. It's too hot. It is a bit on the hot side, isn't it? You know? Yeah. There's definitely, um, there's no breeze. You know? It wouldn't be so bad if we could get some breeze going, but yeah, it is hot. I did, I did say this earlier, it, it is a bit on the hot side, but uh, so far, I've got to admit though, the rides are actually quite good fun, you know, um, from a kid's point of view, and I'm just a big kid, so I'm loving it. Anyway, I'm going to go there now and uh, see if I can find something to cool down or another ride to be a big kid at, so as always, I'll keep you updated. Bye for now. Cheers! Okay. <laughs> Just a wee update for you. I'm a broken man. 
a very, very broken man. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know if you can see behind us, but I'm back at the boat. Um, yes, and I must admit, it has been a fantastic, brilliant afternoon. Um, and uh, the Petty's Animal Park turned out to be bigger than I expected. Um, according to Susan and Paul, it was also nicer, cleaner, more organised and uh, better prepared, maybe is what you would, the term you would use. Um, in all, everybody has given a, a massive thumbs up and um, it's been highly recommended. Uh, however, um, it's hot today. It's very hot. Um, the temperature is currently knocking 30 degrees. Although there is a lovely breeze down here, back on the boat by the river, up there it's the, the animal park is um, surrounded by trees so there's not a lot of wind up there um, and it was just too hot um, for me if I'm honest um, so yes but there's tons for the kids to do they had theatre shows they had um, animal shows they had animal enclosures they had rides they had crazy golf they had trains um, yeah, I mean, it, it really was actually a brilliant place. It's expensive to get into, um, well, I thought. Um, it cost for six of us, that's three adults and three children, about £82. That, to me, sounds like a lot of money for a day out. Um, but once you're in there, I mean, like I say, everything, for the most part, is all free. Um, but, once again, I don't have really much experience with um, uh, family days out. But, according to Susan and Paul, it is, it is expensive. But, it's kind of just par for the course as well. Um, it, it, these places are always expensive. Um, but, once you're in, most things are free, once again. But, it all depends on how organised and how cleanliness and how good the rides are and the entertainment and everything like that. Um, so yes, it's it's expensive, um, but um, it's been highly recommended if you have a, a family. Um, they did say that uh, Daniel is currently nine years old. The twins are five. Um, they did also say that um, anybody for any kids older than Daniel, so maybe, uh, say maybe 12 years older, 12 years or older, I'll say, just off the top of my head, um, they might not quite enjoy it quite as much. It seems to be more aimed at the younger kids. Um, but Daniel had a brilliant time. He, he, he was fantastic, you know. Um, the twins, brilliant time. Um, everybody is fair exhausted um, and yeah um, it was definitely highly recommended so if you are in Reedham um, or in the area um, and you do have a, a young family it's it's a good half hour walk to it um, and obviously a good half hour walk back but I would have to say judging on the experience of the place um, I mean, like I say, they're, they're, they've got a couple of roller coasters. They've got, uh, a, um, a, they've got that wee narrow gauge train that goes around. Um, they've got a, a huge sort of climbing area frame thing. Um, they've got a, a Jurassic golf, crazy golf uh, place. Um, and obviously, they've got wee sort of animal enclosures. They've got meerkats. They were really cute. I mean, they were very, very cute. Um, They've got a wee sort of, um, uh, uh, I won't call them a clown, 
but a wee sort of children's entertainer. He puts on a show. The show's about 15, 20 minutes long, you know, a wee bit of sing singing and dancing and all that, you know, um, and tries to involve the kids, you know. So, uh, yes, it's um, judging on the, um, from what I've been told of other family, you know, comparing other family uh, attractions to Petties. Um, I would, it, it's been given a thumbs up and it has to be said that if you are a family in the reader area, you can get moored up and you want to do something with the kids for um, an afternoon or a day depending on, on how long um, you, you do it. Um, I would definitely, I would, I would have to say the Petties fam, um, Animal Park has been definitely given a thumbs up and I, and I highly recommend it. Um, certainly for younger kids. Um, you might want to maybe make a day of it. I think I think you could possibly make a day of it. You know, I think that's possible. It's, it's, it seems big enough that you could make a day of it if you just take your time going around everything and seeing everything and timing to see all the various different events and the shows that happen throughout the day. You could probably pro probably make a day out of it. Um, and then obviously it's just a, a wee half hour walk back. Um, if it had been just a little bit cooler or a little bit breezier, it would have been a far more enjoyable day for me. Um, but it's got too hot and not enough wind, especially up there. And it was just too oppressive. I, I don't do that, that sort of oppressive heat, you know. <laughs> I like the sun, I like the heat, but I need wind moving air about me so yes um, that is the um, um, opinion of the animal park at Redham it's been given a huge thumbs up from everybody around um, the kids are the quiet for now <laughs> So I would say that's a good sign, you know, that they've enjoyed themselves. Um, they say they've had a, 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 had a good time. Um, Susan and Paul, well, Paul's not doing too bad. He's, uh, he's enjoyed himself. Um, Susan, like myself, is a bit broken with the heat. Um, so, yeah. Um, but we are going to chill tonight. Um, I really don't think we're going to be getting an into much of a party atmosphere tonight we're gonna uh, I think it's we're gonna nip into the Lord Nelson later on for dinner tonight um, I don't think we can suffer much more walking <laughs> so the, the Lord Nelson is literally right there um, across the road so we're just gonna go to the Lord Nelson I think for dinner um, and we'll probably do that um, once we've sort of gathered a wee bit of strength um, so yes that is um, the day. It has been. It started about started out a bit cloudy, a bit windy. You know, it was nice, but possibly a wee bit chilly. But once we got to Redham, um, and uh, the sun came out, it has got hot and really hot. And I'm glad that is actually. I mean, I'm obviously out here at the back just for. I'm just keeping out the wind. Um, but we've got the, the canopy back, we've got the back door open, we're just trying to get some air circulating through the boat. Um, and I'm quite grateful for that because, um, yeah, it's, it's a little too hot for me, you know. But yeah, that's, uh, that's been the day. Um, I don't know if I'm honest, you know, um, <laughs> if I'll be back later. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to, I don't think there's going to be the, the same sort of fun and games that there was last night at uh, the Waveney River Centre. Um, I think we're all just a little too tired um, with the afternoon out, with the walk, with the heat, with the sun. I think we could just be too tired by the time dinner gets done. So to tell you the truth, I'm not expecting to be back later on. Um, if if that changes, I will naturally come back, um, but I will say, for now, this is the end of day three of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 9. Um, it has been a great day, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, 
um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow and what happens in day four. Um, if you have enjoyed today, um, I hope, I, I know obviously it's, this adventure is more from a, a, a family point of view, you know, to try and answer the questions, but I hope you found it informative and fun nonetheless. Um, short cruising day, we'll have a short cruising day tomorrow as well, um, but um, hopefully we'll, we'll get um, some, some more adventure once we move up. Um, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's it, basically. End of day three. Um, if something happens, I'll keep you informed. But in the meantime, if you have been watching, thanks. Uh, join me again for day four of the Great Norfolk Broads Adventure 9. And we'll see where the adventure takes us. Um, so, unless I pop back later on, um, I will speak to you tomorrow. So until then, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. Cheers!